If you've been following my content for the past few weeks, you may have noticed that I have a bit of an odd way of scoring the shows that I've watched. Recently, I made a video discussing what I felt was the biggest flaw in Avatar The Last Airbender, my favorite show to date, and in that video I opened the sentiment by saying that I believe there is no such thing as perfection in art, and yet I still give the show a perfect rating of 10 out of 10. I've also gone on record giving these scores to these shows, and I've made several points about what I value in media and other videos, but I have yet to describe my process for cataloging art which I have consumed. If another scoring method works better for you, that's totally fine. I'm not seeking agreement, only understanding. To begin with, an out of 10 rating is not the same thing as a grade, like you would get from a school assignment. It is not a percentage of good to bad elements, it is a comparison. When I said that I gave Steven Universe Future a 3.5 out of 10, I saw a few comments remarking that this was an absurdly low score and that it was equivalent to a 35%, which would be a failing grade. The critical error I see in this argument however, is that there is a reason we score school assignments on a percentile scale and why we make tier lists for basically everything else. A school assignment is quantifiable. School assignments have rubrics or answer keys that the teacher can compare your work to so that they can see if you got the right answer. Thing is, art does not have a right answer. Art does not have a rubric to follow, and if it did, all art would be striving to be the exact same thing. Avatar The Last Airbender has an energetic and colorful art style, which I love, but does that mean I should mark down Death Note, which is a masterpiece on its own for its mature, sleek, and gritty visuals? Of course not. The two shows are going for dramatically different tones and atmospheres, and they both accomplish them spectacularly. Trying to grade art as if it's a school assignment requires a standard to be set to compare everything else to, but there are infinite factors that play into something's quality which are simply impossible for the human mind to standardize. I think that people adopt this mindset from websites like Metacritic, Mal, and especially Rotten Tomatoes, which list the vast majority of media as being somewhere around the 7 out of 10 range. This is because the 70% range is considered a passing grade without going above and beyond in any specific area. Just as a demonstration, I direct your attention to IMDb's 2017 movie list, ranking every movie from 2017 on an out of 10 scale. Not only are the vast majority of movies on this list hovering within a point and a half of 7 out of 10, but the worst rated movie on this list is The Emoji Movie, which currently sits at a 3.2 out of 10. Now if you've seen The Emoji Movie, you know that it deserves a 1 out of 10, but that isn't what gets shown from the general populace, because most audience members think of cinema in a much more binary manner. Either you like something, or you don't like something. Not much thought is put into why that is, and thus the scale of quality in each aspect of the show is lost on most viewers. And this is what explains the Emoji Movie's rank, because although not many people may want to hear it, it has attributes that appealed to a lot of audience members. The fact that it had just a few elements that most people would consider passionate passing prevented them from thinking of it as downright trash. But for audience members who took the time to consider how well certain elements of the film were done, the Emoji Movie became a much worse experience because they realized that the good elements of the show were just passable at best, and the not good elements were insultingly atrocious at worst. By the way, I know that websites like these also give critic scores, which are usually better in this regard, but they aren't even the scores that get shown as prevalently, despite the fact that they should theoretically be the only scores that get shown at all. So so what is so different about my way of scoring shows that I can give Steven Universe Future a comparable score to what IMDb gave the Emoji Movie? Simply put, I am ranking shows rather than rating them. When I make an observation about something I just watched, I am contextualizing that observation by way of comparing and contrasting it to other observations I've made of similar and different media in the past. So for example, when I watch the Emoji Movie and I see this guy's phone regenerate all of the data it had lost because he stopped the deleting process right before it was about to delete his messages app, and thus save all the emojis who had been deleted up until then, I compare how that scene makes the opposite of sense to how, for example, Death Note's ending makes perfect sense which allowed it to be emotionally powerful, and then I go back to the emoji movie and think, Wow, that was retarded. I wouldn't say that my way of thinking about art is better than any other way, though. If the school grading system slash metacritic method of scoring shows works best for you for whatever reason, that's fine, but those systems are just not satisfying to use for me. It feels like they water down the entire upper half of the 10 scale, honestly. Rather than giving each number from 1 to 10 a set value and then placing the shows that I've watched on that scale accordingly, I allow those shows to manipulate the scale. The only point I try to 
give definitive meaning to is the very middle of the spectrum, 5 out of 10. Which by the way would also be considered a failing score if we go by the grading system. For me, this score is reserved for shows that I feel neutrally about, whether that's because I didn't feel there were any real good or bad elements, or because the bad and good elements evened each other out. But every other score I give to a show is based on comparison to everything else I've seen. Is it about as good as Avatar The Last Airbender? No, then it's probably less than a 10 out of 10. Is it better than Sword Art Online? Yes, then it's probably higher than a 1 out of 10. But what if I end up finding a show that is significantly better than Avatar? Well, then I would bump Avatar down to a 9 out of 10 and possibly bump some stuff that I've already given a 9 out of 10 down to an 8, vice versa for the opposite end of the scale. While I have hopefully been able to describe the advantages to using this comparison system over the standardization system, you may have caught on to the one flaw with this method, and that is that ranking anything with any level of definitiveness takes fucking forever. And this is the main reason that I completely understand not wanting to use this system. Not everyone wants to think nonstop about the media they've consumed, they just want to find good shit and avoid bad shit. But I am quite frankly incapable of not committing exorbitant amounts of time to thinking about why I think this thing is great, and why this thing sucks, and why I think this thing used to be great, and now it sucks. Until I am able to categorize my thoughts about something and be able to explain them lexically, I usually never stop thinking about those things because I'm terrified of forgetting about them. This is of course why my channel exists. It's nothing more than a hub of me attempting to convey the thoughts in my brain in a way that other people can understand, and I usually sound like a complete idiot when I am unable to do so. Take for instance my video entitled Where's the Passion, in which I talked about how the show Keep Your Hands Off Izuken has passion which I value and how shows like Demon Slayer do not. What I failed to do in that video, however, was explain what I even meant by passion, and to be honest, I still don't really know. After hours of reading comments arguing with me and going over my own points in my head, I came to the conclusion that passion in a TV show is how much that show feels like it's made for me, or any other type of person, specifically. But that doesn't really line up with what most people think of when they think of passion, and it certainly doesn't line up with the dictionary definition, and it doesn't even describe exactly what I felt was present in Izuken and what was absent in Demon Slayer. I have yet to put words to what I called passion in that video, and until I do, I will never be able to fully describe why anyone who is a creative of any kind needs to watch Izuken yesterday. I want to be able to communicate what I'm thinking as accurately as possible, and that is why I'm always turning over the same ideas in my head and indeed why I score shows the way I do. And so, to answer the title question, I can best describe a 10 out of 10 show as one which evokes such powerful emotions out of me that I unironically enjoy returning to it, thinking about my experience with it, and which has significantly impacted me as a person. With that said, please keep in mind that this is simply my answer to the title question as of the making of this video, my feelings of what each placement on the 10 scale means are constantly constantly shifting, as so are the placements of individual shows on that scale. If I were willing to put in the effort, I would probably just make endless versions of the same video where I make all the same points but change the wording of one or two phrases to better represent the message I was trying to get across, but at some point I just have to say, close enough. And surprise surprise, this video is the perfect example of that. If you felt like I articulated my thoughts well enough that you understood them, I have accomplished my goal, and if you enjoyed my take on the whole show rating systems thing, I'd appreciate it if you showed it by dropping a like. My content doesn't usually get this meta, but this was a concept that I felt I needed to get off my chest, and I plan on returning to talking about individual shows in the future. I have a pretty big video planned about the show Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts, so if that sounds like something you would enjoy, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of when I upload in the future. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.